The truth never fades, and faith never fails. WMCA Muscleheads. Call 1-800-345-WMCA. That's 1-800-345-9622. Kevin McCullough, WMCA 570. Please write it down. Please tell your friends. Please join us each weekday starting at 2 o'clock Eastern here in New York City. WMCA 570, online, WMCA.com. Uh, whatever, uh, whatever, however, uh, you have to uh, do it to spend time with us. We appreciate the fact that you make that effort each weekday. Uh, it is uh, disturbing, in my mind, to say the least. I was thinking about Keith's call the longer that we got into the commercial break and the more kind of annoyed that I got, not at Keith directly, but the, uh, the mentality of how come it's always me? That has to uh, give more credit to people that uh, b- that that we should be somewhat suspicious of. You know, you, you've got people with direct ties to people that are neck deep in in terrorist connections, right? And and now you've made them principal over the students that are going to be attending this school that are going to it's going to be themed in Arabic. I think some of them are going to be in Arabic language, but Keith said that they were going to be required to teach in English. I'm not I'm not sure who's right on that. Uh, I've already read in multiple reports today where the Middle East history is going to, you know, that's going to be very interesting. Why is it me that always has to give up my suspicions instead of proactive Muslims saying we don't want anything to do? Like uh, like uh, the guy that called earlier in the in the broadcast and said, uh, you know, we I don't embrace this. Why doesn't the principal come out instead of making some hash out of her statement about, well, you know, the T-shirts, uh, well, you know, uh, yeah, we know what it means and all, but, you know, uh, we're, we're thinking that it'll mean this. Why not say, you know what, that probably wasn't the best idea we could do. Why can't we just create a whole different T-shirt altogether? Why is it always that the American culture is the one that's pushed and pushed and pushed and pushed to the limits of credibility, believability, understanding, gray areas, everything. We've got, to, we've got to sit in this fog of nonsense trying to decipher what people mean through a context in a grid that is completely foreign to this continent or to the history of this country. And we're the ones that are told to be a little more uh, patient, a little more understanding, a little more. Yet we were the ones that were hit. Why shouldn't it be the other way around? Muslim communities in mass coming to the mainstream saying, here's how we have rejected and will reject all attempts at violence upon innocent people. And sign a, a counter fatwa, if you will, joining us in our fight against the terrorists, saying, if necessary, we will go to battle with you to see to it that the terrorists are defeated. And we will do it philosophically and intellectually and emotionally and, most importantly, physically. We will stand side by side with you. When will the Islamic community in America that so desperately wants our attention and our uh, approval, when will they say we will stand with the infidel for justice against the pervert of our religion, which is seen to be righteous? When will that switch come about? When that switch starts to happen, Keith then maybe I will give people the benefit of the doubt. When I see the Muslim community in mass say, uh, when I see them in mass say it and shout it from the mountaintop until they are hoarse from saying it, that the terrorism disturbs them and causes them to lose sleep at night every bit as much as it does their American brother. When they are willing to stand with the infidel for peace against the murderous thug terrorist publicly, openly saying to the terrorist, count us as one of them, then maybe I will begin to have some understanding. I hope that I'm not the only one in America that is, that is sitting here scratching my head at why I'm the one that's always wrong. 800-345-WMCA. Let's go to Wayne in Hempstead. Hello, Wayne. Yes, uh, good afternoon. And and uh, I have the answer to your question. I actually uh, spoke directly with uh, the uh, principal that you are discussing. Deba Alan Alson Taser, or whatever her name right, is. Right, yes, and she 
does go by Debbie. And yes, uh, and they are going to teach in, in both Arabic and in English. They're going to also learn Arabic. She confirmed that for you. Absolutely, 100%. Uh, so here's my question. Are you a school teacher, Wayne? Yeah, I was actually interviewing it. I will just add it was it was kind of an interesting interview because um, I didn't get into faith matters since it's a public school, so sure. it's not going to be an issue that we would discuss. But when well, it, you wouldn't think anyway. When I was asked whether this, you know, how I would feel or would I be comfortable in such a setting, I said, well, actually, I think it would be great because uh, I would certainly like to learn uh, Arabic myself, and I'd be I'd very interested in learning about the culture. And I think it would make I'd make a great contribution to having a Semitic background myself. Um, I never got a call back, but that's neither here nor there. But to answer your question, it's simple. Have you seen any protest from the uh, from the Islamic uh, community or the or the Muslim community concerning 23 Koreans who have nothing to do with the United States who are currently that their their lives are at stake right now this minute? I appreciate your compassion. I- I- exponentiation just now. The big problem is they will never come out, and it's time for us to just be Americans and, and stop the nonsense. Yeah, and see, and I appreciate the attitude there, uh, Wayne, because I find it interesting. And first of all, first of all, here we are going to have some education taking place in Arabic. What are they going to be saying in those classrooms, and how can we, the average taxpayers in New York that speak English predominantly, be assured of what is going to be taught in the Arabic classes, in the Arabic sessions that are going to be taught in this school? That's a huge, huge red flag in my, in my, in my uh, mind. But secondly, Wayne is exactly right. It, it, it's, not an, it's not an act of arrogance. It's not an act of uh, discrimination against another uh, religious group. It is simple, quiet, confident Americanism. We're going to lead our lives. We're going to live our lives. We're going to construct our schools around what is in the best interest of the United States of America. And we don't say that you're not welcome here if you don't like that, but we're not here to bend everything about American culture and society to fit your whim. It just it it um, it bothers me beyond belief, and if and if my Muslim friends want my friendship, then convince me, over convince me, convince me until I'm sick of being convinced that you've got my back, and that your crosshairs are aimed at those who you say have perverted your religion. Because here's something else I have learned from talking with Islamic scholars about this particular issue. Muslims in a non-Muslim dominant society are instructed in the Quran by the, uh, uh, by the uh, clerics to lie. The imam says if you are, if you are in the minority, then uh, you, you say whatever you have to to get along. You blend in, you become whatever you can within reason and not violating your you know, Muslim practices day in and day out, but you, you say whatever you have to. But when the culture becomes Muslim dominant, then you become fundamentalist, devout, and you move to back to the hardcore category. 